if you're not familiar with Jason and I, uh, we run a, uh, an online show um, about sports marketing called The Row Show. Uh, you can check it out at rowshow.com. So about every week we uh, have um, either a guest on um, and interview them, somebody in the, in the sports community, or uh, we talk about a quick tip, some new cool little thing that's cheap and, and something easy to do. Which is largely what we're focusing on today. It's kind of the best of collection of quick tips to go, that you can go ahead quickly and put into your department that will help remove some of the paper traffic that most people have. Yeah, and um, well, we've had some great guests on too. Um, we just uh, had a guy in from the San Francisco Giants, and um, uh, had uh, some people on from the Raiders and the Warriors and uh, a bunch of teams. So it's a cool show. So check it out. And even Brian Gainer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the we're gonna go through. I think we ended up with seven main so going green initiatives. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, so first one is uh, interactive media guides, which is kind of all the rage. Uh, right now, obviously, printing, that's the most print that any school does is um, is their big media guide. And now that NCAA regulations and stuff make it, you know, a lot less useful with recruits, um, it's it's uh, becoming one of those things that uh, you want to at least put online in an interactive form as uh, to augment the printed form or to just totally get rid of the printed form. So there's many ways to do this. We've heard of, you know, a lot of companies like ZMags and some of those guys, and we just found a couple that were um, free. S- yeah, f- basically free and and um, and similar similar execution. So, one is uh, you you publisher, <laughs> which is like you publisher, um, very similar to like ZMags, where you're basically providing um, a PDF and they make the PDF into a flippable electronic thing that you can go through. Um, you can zoom in. You can click on hyperlinks in the te- in the text. Uh, basically, just like an online book form of of what uh, of what you're already publishing, um, and it's a uh, it's a very simple process. It's basically just going there, uploading your PDF, and um, and you're good to go. So um, that's that's a pretty good one. And then for something a little bit more advanced, uh, there's a company called Issue, like Issue, um, I S S U dot com. And uh, they have a very nice interactive um, uh, browser, yeah. And the cool thing with this too is instead of like just um, like putting a PDF on a page and letting people download your media guide that way, when you put it in this, um, it, it only loads like one page at a time, and so they get instant gratification. And they can go through the, the, the thirty or hundred page media guide really quickly. And again, these are both um, free options. The issue one um, has like a pro plan or something where. You can um, you can uh, get get it to work on mobile, so uh, you can have something that'll work in apps, and that that's pretty cool too. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, online media guides are definitely the way to go, at least to augment what you're already doing in print, or just to get rid of it. Um, and uh, this is a great way to. We're all about cheap and easy, so. Um, that's a, that's a great way to, to give it a shot. And one thing, I personally like the Issue Pro plan, which I think would probably satisfy the needs of LSU, so it would cover probably about every college out there. It's only $19 a month. And two things that are neat in here, when you're flipping through it online and go to print, you're not going to print the whole thing. You have the option to print the whole thing, but you also can just print the pages you're interested in, which cuts down on the amount of paper out there, and plus you also have the consumer or person in the media that are printing off the stats section they're interested in. And the second thing is completely escaping. Oh, um, the email and social functionality that comes with the pro plan as well is on par with a lot of with what, what a lot of schools are paying four or five hundred dollars for a gymnastics media guide or something to go online, and you're able to do that for all of your sports at nineteen dollars a month. That's a good point. People will be able to share, it. and and that's with the free stuff too. You'll be able to yeah. share it as well. So. So that's a solution for you. Uh, the next, the next hit is a uh, fan feedback collection tool we featured in the Rose Show about internet episodes ago. I absolutely, personally love it. It's uh, it's something that's really cool, and I hope catches on uh, many more places. It's called Squeal, and this is uh, this is the homepage. The basic idea of Squeal is to give you real time customer feedback and a place for your customers to go. That's not a comment box, not a direct complaint through a manager. And most importantly in this day and age, not a negative review on Yelp or something that they're tweeting about hating about your stadium or team or anything else like that. Um, Squeal.com works extraordinarily uh, easily to, uh, to sign up. You hit connect your business, they've populated all the business profiles, venues, everything else that are li- listed in Google and you go ahead and claim it. They have a phone verification system to prove that you're actually the owner of that property. 
At that point in time, you can quickly set up the managers of that property or areas within that property so you can directly route traffic or complaints that, complaints that might be coming in to specific people. So the way it works from like a fan's perspective is uh, you put up some kind of signage or something that says, hey, mm -hmm. tell us how we're doing. You know, if you have any questions or problems, whatever, go to squeal.com on your phone. And, and it's not an app or anything. They don't have to download anything. They can open it up on any phone, even fairly dumb phones. And when they open it up, um, since they're at your location, they're instantly at you know the ticket office or whatever, and then they can leave their uh, their comments and feedbacks for you, feedback for you, which all goes into a um, admin panel as a business owner that you that you can see. Right here would be an example of uh, someone that wrote wrote a message in. Um, you know, this is obviously a fake one that we set up, but you know, you have the stars, a, a note that they write, and you can quickly reply to them right here by just writing a note. And it's all trackable within your department and all the managers that uh, that are there or anyone else that might have the responsibility to be replying for that area. Mm -hmm. um, online influence thing. Do you yeah. On that? Yeah. So uh, if they provide like a, a Twitter handle or um, there's a few other things that they can do too, uh, it'll actually go out and find out how many followers they have and give you kind of an influence level of that person, so you know like how much you want to not mess with them. Um, so the whole idea of Squeal is really just to get things off so the people aren't in line at your ticket office, you know, um, having a bad experience or having a rowdy fan or something, and they are um, and they're, and they start complaining on Facebook or Twitter. The idea is hopefully we can get them to complain directly to you and you can deal with it. One of the great ways to deal with it is you can set up like a, a custom coupon code for them and send it directly to them through the system and then obviously track all of that. Um, uh, through there as well, so it's it's kind of a neat um, little um, little way to uh, work with uh, your your uh, fans and get some customer feedback without having it be all over the public. And I know we said put up signs. I should point out that Squeal provides the signs for free to you, so you can say I want a hundred window window clings to put around my basketball arena. They'll send them to you for you to put up for free. Yep. And Squeal uh, right now to be a business owner is one hundred percent free to use. Um, next one, this definitely gets rid of a lot of paperwork, and I'm surprised a lot of schools don't do enough of it, but using online forms for everything. Everything from like groups signing up for things, I mean not just things that you can't like funnel through your actual ticketing software, but um, anything that you would like actually put out a paper form for, there's, there's just not really a reason for it, and this is probably the greenest thing that we'll talk about today. Um, uh, it's very easy to do online forms. There's uh, one company, Wufu, it's very popular. Um, this one's a little uh, more commercial than the second option we're going to talk about, but it's very easy to generate a form, get exactly the kind of fields that you want, have people fill it out. Um, if you're, I've seen it used a lot. If you have like a group coming, you can set up a form for that group so that they can all register their people, and then that way, instead of having a huge paper trail that you really don't want to type in anyways, um, you have it all electronically, and you can add it to your database of customers that you can that you can work with. So it's a great way to great way to collect data, and then um, the other option, uh, which is not commercial at all, is uh, docs.google.com. If you're familiar with Google Docs, um, it's a great way to um, to make forms, completely free and doesn't have like advertising or anything like that because it's Google or well, <laughs> they have ads, but this particular thing doesn't have ads. Um, but uh, you just go in there, you can really easily create a form, um, add all kinds of different questions, things of multiple choice, fill in great the blank. Five, all that stuff. Yep. And the cool thing about the Google Docs is it, um, it, it throws it right into um, the uh, spreadsheet version of Google Docs. And Google Docs is kind of like an online office. So the spreadsheet version is basically you're getting an Excel file, which you can export and then do all kinds of things with. So your forms go directly into Excel. Like, um, you can't get any more simpler than that. And again, just think about, you know, any time that you're doing the paper form or asking people to sign up for something in person, um, even, if, uh, even if it's at, like, a counter, top counter and someone's there, like, working with them, you know, it might be good just to have a little kiosk to have them sign up uh, electronically through some kind of form. Definitely, definitely a lot less work in the back end, and your student work or intern would be very grateful, I think. <laughs> Uh, the next we have two, two uh, products that we covered in um, past roadshows that are both uh, free um, or have a pro plan that's less than $20 a month to analyze and measure social media influence. The first one I want to highlight is socialmention.com. I really like this. I look up a ton of things on it all the time whenever I'm talking to a client. 
Um, a few things that it, it does that are pretty unique. Um, it'll show like the the strength of how much someone is being talked about or an item is being talked about on uh, on Twitter, Facebook. Um, in this case, we search in ACMA, by yeah. the way. So it's and the one other really neat thing is the sediment. It actually tracks if it's a positive or negative reaction people are having to that brand or entity online within social media. And gives you that ratio. So here you see there's been like one negative tweet about NAC, two hundred and one that have been neutral and fifty-eight where they're able to detect a positive assessment where someone's saying they're having a good time or enjoying themselves. So that's how they're getting that ratio. Um, passions measuring measuring the intensity of of, uh, of their reactions or sediment, and reach is measuring how many followers the people that are talking about these things actually have. So it's a pretty neat tool to go out and uh, see what people are saying about you. In a very in a very real time manner, and there's a lot of data that you can pull from here to go ahead and uh, track the success of your event, or to have as you know anecdotal data to go ahead and back up what you were doing and uh, get uh, feedback from fans. Yeah, if you do like a large initiative for a game and you want to kind of measure that turnout, well, nowadays yeah. if you have if you do something cool like a special halftime or something like that, maybe. You, went out of your way and you recommended Maybe the axe giveaway at Idaho or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but you, uh, you, know, you, you went out of your way, you spent a little extra money. So you can see on social media what people had to say about it and then uh, and go from there. And then in general, you can look up your brands, find the, mo find the mo people that are talking the most about you, um, and then you know, rank it by sediment so you can find out you know, who's neutral or negative and see if you can do anything about that. And it really, uh, really is a transparent, simple way to find the key influencers amongst your fan, amongst your fan base online and be able to reach out directly to them. Yeah, the, the main thing with this section is um, we, you know, we talk about uh, going digital and this is just a great way to, you got to measure it if you're going digital. So, so another great way to measure it is uh, Crab Rooster, which is one of my uh, uh, personal favorites. Right here you see our, our uh, Twitter account plugged into Crab Crowd booster. It's going to measure every tweet that you've ever sent, um, how many times it got retweeted, how many total impressions it had within Twitter. Uh, it'll measure your followers, follower growth over time, who your most influential followers are. Uh, it's, it's a great way to take your university Twitter account, your athletics Twitter account, even a coach's Twitter account, and measure the influence they're actually having, the interaction they're having with their fans. The other really neat thing here, if you look up at the very top of the recommendations, <coughs> is it's measuring how many times each one of your items is being retweeted or how many impressions it's reaching based upon the time of day it's actually being sent. So over the next 24 hour periods of time, if you're scheduling a tweet and hoot sweet about an important announcement or some fun, funny question, whatever it might be, it's giving you three times that would recommend for maximum impact for you to go ahead and have that broadcast out at. And that's constantly updating based upon your, uh, your ongoing success and history within Twitter. Yep, so it's telling you when's the best time to tweet and then it allows you to schedule the tweets and it's doing a good job of analyzing everything you've ever done. So just to be clear, so this way impressions and then size of the bubble is how many replies. So uh, we don't have nearly the interactivity that um, you know, an average team that. would have, but you can see every university, like what are people, what really gets people excited, what kind of tweets and you can kind of shape your, uh, your social media off of that. And uh, it supports Twitter as well as Facebook, so you can get a similar experience with what's going on, on Facebook, like how your posts are. Like Facebook has insights, but um, this does a really good job of just kind of communicating that a lot better because insights are just a bunch of graphs and, and not, not super useful. Anyways, it's still in private beta, so there's a, a special uh, invite code. It's an invite only right now. Um, just a, another cool site. We're obviously not affiliated with any of these people, but we, we like to find new and, and uh, cheap and cool things. So That's Crowd Booster. And one thing I, I want to point out uh, yeah. before we start there, Export reports shoots oh, all yeah. this out in a very easy manner that you're able to put into a PDF and send off to your boss. So I mean, if you want to go ahead and keep track and have a weekly report going in on Twitter activity and really help drive that within your office, this makes it so simple for you. You don't even have to really compile it. You're sitting export, having a PDF that you can go ahead and refer to and explain it to everyone else in the office. Yeah, that's true. And and one of the um, things we didn't talk about too much is uh, influential in influential followers. Yeah, like very cool. Mention. So it um, shows you people who are following you, who's retweeting you the most and replying the most, and then 
who will, of those people who has the most um, followers themselves. And so what you end up with is a great list of people that you might want to work with in real life um, because they have the most influence and they're, and, they're, and they're following you the most. And like you said, you can export these things into like PDF reports, but you can also export them in like into Excel and yeah. have data and start creating databases of some of your social media that's not online. So it's a very powerful tool. Um, again, it's it's free. Check it out. Um, next thing, and this this again goes really back to like getting rid of paper. Um, so two things that you can use to uh, to go green a little <laughs> bit more. Um, is uh, short URL codes, which uh, I think we're all familiar with. I'm going to tell you a little something new about that, and then uh, QR codes, which you know are all the rage with the kids these days. But um, <laughs> so basically, what you can do with those two is it lets it lets you link to some online media of some sort to like tell more of the story. So the way we look at this is, you know, if you were going to do like maybe a, you know five or ten page brochure, well, you can consolidate it down to like one beautiful color pe page or something that. It says, you know, go to this short code or use this QR code to go online and get more of the story, which could have videos in it and more interactivity and, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, and one point I want to make off of that is generally if you hand out a five-page brochure or some um, quad-fold thing that's going to be folded out, if someone's interested enough actually to pull through and read all the information that you're crowding into this that's really kind of cluttering the emotional message you're trying to convey, they're, they're going to be interested enough to go online and do the follow-up to get that information. Yeah, so and it really allows you to make it an advertising yeah. piece that you're producing there as opposed to trying to cram every single thing about your athletic fund onto a handout to someone you're trying to get ten thousand dollars from. Yeah. And the and the great way to um, uh, the great thing too is is once they're online then you can actually uh, have some activity with that and get them to sign up or purchase or whatever. You can't like click a, a newspaper ad and buy something, right? Yeah. So um, there's two ways to do that. Obviously, Bitly is very popular, but there's something I don't think a lot of people know about is they recently made their pro plan free. So you can make your own domain name. So if you have, um, you know, like Idaho, you could get like ida.ho. I'm sure that's available, you know, something random like that. And you can make your own short code instead of having to use Bitly. So everybody is, uh, you know, when you're tweeting and stuff, you could use your own short code, which would be kind of cool. So you can do some kind of version of your mascot or something like that. You just, you know, set up your own domain name, which you can do very easily, like through GoDaddy or something. We're talking like $8 a year here. And now you've got your own custom brand. You're not like just setting everything out. But once you plug that into Bitly, again, that's a free service now. It never used to be. Uh, once you plug that in, then you get all the analytics. So you can see the clicks over time and the impressions, how many tweets, all that jazz of any of your links. So whether you're using them in print or using them in person, it's a, it's a great way to, uh, or online, um, it's a great way to, to uh, just add tracking to, to what's, what's going on and not just blindly sending people to you know, your, uh, your, main, uh, your main website because you never know if they're actually going to find their way to this. And the other thing, if you want to do A-B te A, testing of specific direct mail brochures, Bitly link or anything like that, it gives you a great way to go ahead and measure how much follow-up you're getting. Because you can go ahead yeah. and have two different links in there that you're running the exact same campaign for you don't have you know, mm -hmm. a measurable metric to come back to. And then the other way is QR codes. And uh, there's 8 million ways to generate a QR code, but uh, Bitly will also make QR codes. So whenever you, when you put your link together, um, to just make a plain old link, you can um, have it generate a, a barcode as well. So the QR codes in the corner. So QR codes, like when somebody has their cell phone, even a even a cheap cell phone or a, a um, you know a a, a, a mo more modern cell phone, you use your camera, you take a picture of the QR code, and then it fast forwards you to whatever the QR code says to do, which is typically go to a website. So. Uh, it's a good way, I would couple it maybe with a bit.ly code or something, because I think a lot of people want to just type in the co type in a URL, especially if it's short, um, versus taking a picture. But um, for some people from a distance, you know, people see QR codes and they're like, oh, that means that poster has some more stuff for me to check out. And it, it's just a great way to take like a static poster or a newspaper ad and propel them into you know, digital and having them online looking at, you know, a video or or some kind of thing that you've put together. Yep. Yeah. And the important thing to note here is you're printing posters, you're printing schedule cards already. Finding a little bit of real estate to drop a QR code and some that's leading to a higher level of interactivity where you have a stronger sales pitch mm -hmm. is, you know, it's free. It's already within the budget of what you're doing. That's what we always try to advocate and share. Yeah, and uh, one other thing, so with uh, if you're doing newspaper ads, what this means too is you don't necessarily have to have like the, 
the two quarter page of the page ad, you can get a smaller ad or a half, you know, instead of a half page ad, get a quarter page in the corner or something like that and really promote people to go online to see, you know, more. So then your call to action is a little bit easier. You're just trying to get them to, to go online and once they're there, then they can click and buy tickets or whatnot. I know a couple people have talked about this already, but one of the things we wanted to highlight were location-based coupons. There's all sorts of ways to go ahead and do these, uh, including through the Road 27 iPhone application. I and mean, that's the only plug I'm actually going to throw into the show. <laughs> um, one thing I wa wanted to highlight were Facebook deals. There's a number of ways to go ahead and do Facebook deals right now. And this essentially was what Foursquare had out for free, but was rolled out earlier this year to the Facebook base. Um, Works really well on mobile, um, at, le at least in my personal opinion. One of the amazing things about Facebook is through their mobile apps and actual mobile Facebook web, they've seen a 25% growth since, since uh, the end of February when they reported numbers. They now have over 250 million people accessing fa Facebook and mobile devices daily worldwide. Uh, there's four types of deals, three that probably relate uh, mostly to college athletics. You have individual deals, friend deals, loyalty deals. Um, the idea being here that uh, you can go ahead and incent people for a certain online activity besides just doing a basic coupon. Individual deals would be the basic coupon. For a friend deal, it's only going to happen if I'm bringing people with me to the game or if I'm bringing people with me to the team fan shop. Loyalty, it's only going to happen based upon how many times I've visited you or had interaction with you in person. Uh, the charity deal would be a great tie-in, depending on what type of uh, pink zone games or what you might have going on in the year to tie into a pro promotion with Facebook. But um, I, I couldn't give you a specific example of someone where I know that's been done at this point in time. It's just kind of a thought I've always had. Um, okay. Sorry, and I was, was yeah. going to say, um, uh, one of the things that we'd, we'd like to see some schools exploring too is, you know, you've got a lot of sponsorship deals is actually allowing some of your sponsors to add deals to your locations. So if I check in the arena, maybe I get some kind of uh, coupon discount for the restaurant down the street uh, or um, you know whoever, whoever the sponsor might be and try to do maybe some cross stuff. So like at that restaurant when I check in, maybe I get a deal on, uh, on uh, tickets at the, at the stadium. So try to be creative about it. Basically it gives you the ability to have a very cute Groupon-esque style experience. Um, through your Facebook fan following, and uh, without Not paying, away. yeah, without paying Groupon half the revenue you're driving. Yeah. Foursquare deals is very similar. Facebook deals probably was kind of a rip off of this, if you want my honest opinion. Um, the difference being Foursquare has what 20 million followers, and Facebook is 700. But yeah, yeah, it's a little different. Uh, you have your friend special, a swarm special, where you would have the minimum number of total people that need to check into an event. Um, you know, so it could be like 20 people actually have to be here for this to be activated. Um, Flash bit special, running for a short period of time. Newbie being, this is your first time here. Yeah, newbie's kind of different. I mean, Facebook doesn't have that, so that's, yeah. that's kind of cool. So the very first time that they check in. And then uh, check in based upon how many times you've been there or check in. Well, you know, this is kind of just an, uh, an antidote I don't even know if I should go into, but I think we're going to have time. I always uh, now buy the Mediterranean Duo Sandwich at Noodles and Company, which is in the basement of my condo because I get a pretty rice crispy treat when I check it on Foursquare. This is one example. You do? That's awesome. I do. I know. <laughs> I love rice crispy treats. <laughs> um, so uh, either way, they're free, and you should all be using them. Uh, lastly, maybe? Something like that? Yeah. Compared to one of the Yeah. So um, one of the last things is, um, is uh, a great way to go digital is to actually give people content that they can only get digitally, uh, which is uh, video. And obviously video is, is uh, all the rage these days, as I say. Um, and uh, you, can obviously, you can just put videos up on YouTube and, and have it all saturated with ads and all that. But um, it's better if you kind of take that in-house and not really in-house literally, but if you kind of take that on and, and try to add some of your branding to it and, and really have control of it and not like necessarily hand it all over to, to the YouTubes of the world. So um, there's a great site called uh, Vively, or Vively um, that basically lets you make a Hulu style blog. So you get what you get, you can kind of see here. So you get just nice big video to play, no ads, and then you've got um, all the other videos which you can arrange by you know, sport and category and 
and allow people to comment on them. And if they comment on them, the comments show up on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and and it's it's really great. It it provides a really good like front end experience for the users versus just like going to YouTube. Yeah. So um, it might be a good place to to uh, throw in your videos and and launch them there and send people there because I think we'll have a better experience and you'll have uh, more you know you'll have a nice HD video playing. And it's uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It's you know it's it's pretty cheap. Um, Isn't it like nice and, and yeah. or something like that? <laughs> it's like 120 bucks a month or something. Um, and then the uh, the cool thing with it too is uh, it's it's really made for just anybody who's not really knows anything about video. So um, you can upload videos just like you would through YouTube. Use you know any format video; it'll convert it into what it's supposed to be converted to, including mobile formats. So when somebody goes to this on an iPhone or Android or an iPad, they're going to be able to play the video and they're going to have a good experience. Um, the other thing is you, they have a little program that you can install on your, on your Windows computer or your Mac computer and uh, it, it puts a little folder on your computer and everything, every video you drag onto it just automatically goes up to your site and is converted and ready to go uh, without you know, any, any effort on your part. So um, that's a good one. Uh, when it comes to uh, to just making like a, a video blog and kind of owning that a little bit more, and so uh, what we talked about today, um, besides the first one, the interactive media guys, we've all covered at, in at, in great detail in uh, in one of our episodes. I mean, we've covered um, like for example some of these like the analyze and measure social um, that we talked about crowd booster and a social mention. We've also talked about three or four other ones too. So if you check out the episodes, if you have uh, if you have any interest in any of the, the different categories that we talked about, there's you know a good 30 minutes of talking about each of those things with uh, you know guests and all that jazz. Um, so those are the episode numbers um, on on what we've talked about today. Some of those go way back. To, yeah, uh, episode 14. 14. Yeah, it was like almost two years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we've gave you guys a couple of like actual tips that you can execute um, on uh, on going green and basically just going digital. And uh, all these things. Anytime you're going digital, obviously you're uh, you're uh, being, you know, you're saving the seals and whatnot. So, <laughs> but more importantly, you're saving money, <laughs> which yeah. is always a good thing. So, um, yeah, thanks for your time. And uh, if you guys have any questions, we.